a steady overnight rain, we have a drying track, partly cloudy skies, and lots of sunshine. The promise of a beautiful North Georgia Autumn Day Championship Day and the final round of the American Le Mans Series. Welcome to Road Atlanta, where Audi presents the fourth running of the Petit Le Mans. I'm standing with JJ Leto, whose car isn't completely straight. You had that accident. The boys did a great job rebuilding, and then you put it on the pole. You looking forward to this race? Yeah, looking forward. I mean, the pole doesn't really mean a lot, you know, in a 10-hour race. So it's uh, it's just you have to have a consistent, very good car, you know, for the throughout the race. And uh, you just have to keep it on the track, you know. I mean, not hitting anybody, not let anybody to hit you, and uh, just keep on going. You've got to beat those Porsches and one of the top drivers there. Sasha Masson, you've still got a chance of winning. <coughs> Here's Derek Bell's old endurance partner, Hans Stuck, in one of the BMWs. And the Petit Audi... Le Mans. Now let's take a look at this two-and-a-half-mile loop through the red clay of the North Georgia Hills. Here's Jeremy Dale. Well, of course, uh, the, the big factor with Road Atlanta is elevation change. It goes up and down like a roller coaster, and you can see from turn one to turn six, there's not a lot of straight section to that racetrack, especially down to turn five. So passing, very, very difficult. You've got that long back straightaway, but again, it is up and down and very blind with that very slow chicane, 11 and 12 at the end with a very quick run onto the main straightaway. And we've got a great onboard lap. Didier de Radigues of Belgium has already clinched the driving title in the 675 class. And that, of course, is a new class and a new lap record. But Andy Pilgrim in the GTES pole sitting Corvette and JJ Leto in one of those beautiful BMW VA powered M3 GTRs were one and two seconds, respectively, under their class records. Going back to the point that we made earlier, the GT cars are a lot quicker this year. And that makes things tougher for the quicker cars coming up from behind in its three previous runnings has already become a sports car classic worldwide. I'm Bob Varsha with Derek Bell and Jeremy Dale. Calvin Fish and Andrew Marriott are in the pit lanes. We have a full staff of announcers to take you live flag to flag here at the final event of the American Le Mans Series season for 2001. There you see the pole sitting Audi in the hands of Tom Christensen will be partnered by Ronaldo Capello. There is Hans Stuck aboard one of the BMWs. Your older driving buddy there, Derek. Yes, a lot of experience in that man's hands. You can say great, great driver and a great man. We are under the yellow for a turn, well, actually a turn 12 before the green flag incident. Which match Max Anzalelli in his Cadillac and John Field and Alola Judd came together. Field went into the wall backwards. That car has now been pulled aside. The lights are out on the safety car. And we expect the green flag this time by. Our standings are both sidelined for the moment. We are not sure whether or not that car will get back on track. Perhaps we can learn more with Calvin Fish. He split up York Miller and JJ later in case their car had problems. They have maybe, maybe have foreseen something like this happening. Well, Calvin, you can make an argument to do it both ways. You don't want to mess with the chemistry on the team, but uh, you know the, the championship should should at times take precedent. The, the real break here for the Corvette guys is we're under yellow and and the, the laps are not clicking by as quick as they would. So it is a real opportunity for this Corvette team to get that car fixed. I'd just like to make a point about this moving drivers from one car to another. I drove with Hans Stuck for Porsche for two, several years. We won the World Championship together in like 86 probably. The next year we, we deserved to win it together and we drove the whole year. We won Le Mans. We should win the title together but just through some stupidity we end up being split up and I won the title by one point from Stuckey which I don't think was correct. I always felt that we deserved to be co-champions. I'm sure the drivers out there feel the same way. You just had a look at J.J. Leto and his BMW, the pole sitter in the GT class. There goes the green flag, and once again, Tom Christensen gets a great where, jump where in the Audi Stephen R8. Where is Johansson? What happened to Stephen Johansson? Did they stop? He may have stopped for a top-up. Here are the Cadillacs at it again. Former Grand Prix winner as a teammate to Michael Schumacher in his Benetton days, and that is saying something. He is also, of course, a winner at the Le Mans 24 Hours. We're going back to the GT battle. J.J. Leto to the right of your screen. One of those amazing V8-powered BMW M3 GTRs. On board with him. Remember the lap in the Audi before, 2.5 Gs? There we saw a peak of about 1.8. So that gives you an idea what that Audi is doing at turn one. And remember, at the bottom of the S's, the Audi was close to 160 miles an hour as we approach turn five. And there's actually a little lift, which is surprising. So 130 miles an hour almost. So 
30 miles an hour difference at the end of the S's. And run up to turn six. Down a couple of gears. So important here to get a clean run through turn seven. As mentioned earlier, J.J. Leto has been split up from his fellow title contender and regular driving partner, Jorn Mueller. And that German is standing by with Calvin Fish. Yes, indeed, Bob. Jorg, you've split the, the driving chores up this weekend to try and give you guys a better chance of clinching the driving championship. J.J.'s in the 42 car, you're in the 43 car. However, you're only running two guys here. How much of a test is that physically for you guys in a long race? Um, I think we're lucky that the sun is not shining too hard. Uh, you know, it's very hot in these cars, uh, very tough. You, you know, one stint is something like uh, one hour twenty. So uh, we have some drinks in the car. We have these cooling packs here. It helps a little bit, but you know, after three, four stints, you're really tired. Tell us about this new cool suit that you're working on here. Yeah, there's some uh, gel ice packs getting in here. They, they get cooled down to minus, uh, I don't know, just in Fahrenheit, minus 45, minus 50 degrees Celsius, and that last something like uh, an hour and 20 so it's, it's quite quite uh, warm when we stop the uh, stop the race uh, when we stop the stint sorry you can see here guys they've actually played a little game here on your we've got some hair on here i'm not going to mention what these things are here but this team likes to have a bit of fun even though they're going for the championship <laughs> typical hairy chested racing driver Either that or Britney Spears, I'm not sure. But anyway, out on the racetrack, you saw while Jordan was speaking, his teammate was sandwiched by those two LMB 900 Cadillacs. Gives you an idea of the speed differential between these LMB 900 prototypes and the production-based GT cars. Having said that, these BMWs are amazing, about 450 horsepower from those V8s. Think they just, I mean, they just love racing. They say they're just unbelievable to drive. They must be with this lovely talky engine they have now. Well, they're so good, as a matter of fact, that I think there's some talk about maybe opening up the inlet restrictors on those cars a little bit and moving them up into the GTS category because they have developed them so, um, so, so well that, uh, you know, lap time wise, you know, these guys were more than two seconds quicker than the than the pole time in GT last year. And that is a tremendous development when you consider. Green flag waves once again. We are back underway. As Johnny Herbert in the champion Audi is now out front. And look at Stefan Johansson's Audi coming forward. Max Angelelli into third in the Cadillac, followed by Frank Bila in the car that Emanuele Piro just climbed out of. An interesting strategy by the Yost factory team to stop here, and they, they did take tires, well, but not, like I said, he has nothing to lose. He's I mean, not he relaxed. Can, he could just go and race. We've I'm, got a long way to go. He can still lose that title if he parks shortly. David Murray, normally known for his prowess in Porsches, now in a BMW this weekend, one of those beautiful V8 M3 GTRs. And that is Jorg Mueller behind him in the Schnitzer car. So these cars are similar, run by different teams. The Schnitzer team based in Germany. There is the overall leader, Johnny Herbert, coming around to put a lap on those two guys. Of course, the PTG cars, the red, white, and blue car that David Murray is in right there, is run out of Virginia. He did not get a good run out of turn seven, I'm sorry. Uh, and of course, these cars are similar, as a matter of fact, almost identical, but a, an enormous battle between these two teams, the American-based team and the European-based team. Winchester, Virginia, to be precise, the old shops of the Group 44 Jaguar team. If your knowledge of sports car racing goes far, that far back, as Mueller goes around to grab that spot. But it's a good point. These are virtually identical cars. One, the BMW Motorsport team from Munich, the other, the PTG team from Virginia. And there's a tremendous intra-team rivalry there. And I ha you have to say the white and blue car has been just fractionally ahead all weekend on time, on speed, that team. They, they seem to have the edge, don't they? The European team, the Schnitzer team. Running 12th and 13th in the overall are York Mueller and David Murray. And not far back is Boris Said in another of the PTG cars. 
It's good to see David Murray in a nice drive. He's such a talented driver and I think has a lot to offer, but he, he never quite seems... Oh, look at this lot, but he never quite seems to get the best drive at the right time. In the remaining factory Audi, I have an email from Stu wanting to know a rough idea of the horsepower in the different classes. Well, there's an LMP 900 car. They make typically around 600, 620 horsepower. And the LNP 675s, they're lighter, but they make in the high 400 range. The GTS cars will make something over 600 horsepower, but they're a lot heavier, less tire, less aerodynamic downforce. While the GT machinery will make somewhere between 400 and 450 horsepower. And of course, no one will tell us really how much horsepower any of these right, cars so all make. the foregoing is lies. <laughs> <laughs> no one will actually tell you. And of course, all of these cars breathe through air restrictors. And what an air restrictor is, is essentially a limit on how much air you can put into the motor. And so you have to pass air through a small restrictor into the motor. And it's like trying to breathe through a straw. I mean, that is really the best analogy. And all of these cars do that. And that's how the ACO, with their rules package, controls all of these different types of race cars with turbos and without turbos and V8s and V12s. And look at this battle heating uh, up. We talked about how traffic would be a factor all day. And there it is. Up the inside goes Bila. Looking for second place, and it appears he has it. There's Mark Goosens and second in 675. There he is just coming off turn seven. I'm sorry, Bob. I had my scoring bad there. That's why I'm here, Jeremy. I appreciate you saving me. <laughs> it won't be the first time I'll do that, by the way. I'm sure I'll give you plenty of opportunities <laughs> to do likewise. Thank you. Plunging downhill, what used to be known as Gravity Cavity here at Road Atlanta before they ran a tunnel under it and raised the ground level just that little bit. I suppose you could still make yourself dizzy if you went in fast enough. Here's a look at Steve Knight. Sharing that car. Mel Hawkins and Claudia Hurtkin, the other female driver in the series. Knight from Castle Rock, Colorado. This is a Lola B2K40 Nissan. So completely different mechanical combinations from the two cars. All right, thanks very much, Andrew. It gets very, very hectic down there in the pit lane, as you see. And there is plenty going on in the pit lane as the field completes its stops and comes back out in preparation for a green flag. The Johansson car stopped as well. This is on board with one of the BMWs. So the GT class BMWs. This is the factory assisted team from Germany. Frederick Eckblom. As we mentioned earlier, a great rivalry between them and their American based colleagues and rivals from the PTG team. To remark that they obviously didn't clean his windscreen at that stop and that's one thing that you really like as a driver is getting all that streaky oily stuff off because if it rained which it looked like he could at any time it becomes very very unpleasant because the wipers do not clean oil and water on. and that'll become especially important when it gets dark because it gets very very difficult in the dark and it looks immaculate Jan Magnuson sits in waiting to be given the signal to head back out while looking at our GT class leader while you're watching this, Frank Bila, who we saw go off just as an opportunity to take the green flag, has just turned a lap at 1 minute 11 seconds. Very close to the qualifying performance of his teammate, Tom Christensen. An absolutely blinding lap from Bila. On board with J.J. Leto in this beautiful BMW M3 GTR. The V8 car making well over 400 horsepower. Bottom of the screen are Eastland speed lines. Some of your comments and questions. We actually did know that, but we just haven't had a chance to say it yet. <laughs> There's been so many things we haven't been able to get to. It seems terribly relevant so far. We haven't seen too much of it, have we? There goes Stefan Johansson. Well, looks like the opinions seem to be running in favor of doing the last hour commercial free. Uh, so there's second place, and by the way, that was first and second place we saw drive by that BMW, so... ...to take the green flag on a restart. Just an example of the kind of action that we have seen thus far through two hours, 20 minutes, and counting. 
there you see the elapsed time. I was off by about two and a half, but what the heck. Stefan Johansson leads, Frank Beal second. We'll be back.